Good morning and welcome to my hometown of Birmingham for the Simply Health Great Birmingham 10 kilometer run. Now we've got two elite races for you this morning as well as thousands of people from all across the West Midlands who are going to be taking on this wonderful run. Now everyone's doing it for so many different reasons. Some people are trying to set a cheeky little personal best. Some people are naturally raising money for charity and some people are getting ready for that big, big international marathon which is going to be happening in Birmingham later on in the year and we will be bringing you some of those wonderful stories all through the morning now with the women's elite just over 10 minutes away and the mass is setting off in three quarters of an hour it's time to get ready and then get going now many of the athletes and the runners are sort of getting in the zone right now and we sent out Christian Malcolm to see what was going on let's see what happened thank you Ayo I'm joined here by Kelly Sermonton three-time Olympic bronze medalist how does that feel it feels really good. Obviously, this time last week, I was only two-time Olympic medalist, but now from Monday, I found out that I had been upgraded to bronze because uh, the Russian heptathlete Chernova had failed a drugs test from 2008. So that upgraded me to bronze. So um, I've been, last nine years, I've been really hurtful and upsetting. I've been upset about my career, but now this has kind of vindicated that, and I feel really happy about being finally a two-time Olympic medalist in heptathlon. So back-to-back -back heptathlon medalist is quite an achievement. Is there an element of frustration, anger, you just absolutely relieved that actually you've got your medal you fully deserve? All of those, Christian, actually, all those emotions. I went through happiness, sadness, uh, frustration. I know I cried a lot of happy tears, sad tears, but I think I spent my last nine years being unhappy about it. So I thought I'm not going to spend the rest of my life being unhappy. So I'm going to look forward and be and cherish the medal. And hopefully I'll receive a nice new shiny medal to celebrate it. And when I've got that in my hands, then it will be really a special moment. Well, Cal, I wish you all the best this morning. And I hope you feel more happy after this run and not so tired either. Hopefully I'll get the people who are running six minutes um, round really well. I'm nervous as hell, so um, just as nervous as anybody else, but hopefully I'll do a job for the people around me who's going to hopefully run 60 minutes for the 10k today here in Birmingham. Cal, enjoy it this morning. Good luck. You know, such wonderful news for Kelly Southerton. Congratulations on that upgrade for, for the medal. Now there'll be plenty more coming from the start line all through the morning, but for you lot, here's what you've got to look forward to over the next couple of hours. Birmingham opens its streets to the runners once again. 10 kilometers a day and maybe a half marathon or the full 26 miles beckons in October. Whatever the reason for taking part, we'll hear inspirational stories motivating today's runners to make a difference through sport. And at the front of the field, Gemma Still is back in Birmingham, the scene of her half marathon victory four years ago. I'm joined by two very willing runners doing it for very different reasons. We've got um, Steve Edwards, marathon man here, and also Hazel Williams as well. You're going to be doing your very first. So let's start with you, Steve, Mr. Marathon Man. Well on your way to doing a thousand marathons. Where are you now? I'm actually on 788 at the moment. Um, it's not just about a thousand marathons. What I'm trying to achieve is become the first person in the world to run a thousand marathons, averaging um, hopefully under three hours, 20 minutes. Um, and so far I've managed to average just over three hours, 17 minutes. Mate, that's not bad going. I mean, come on, what's the motivation? Why'd you start it? Um, I ran my first marathon in 1981, just down the road in Coventry. I was only 18 years old. And to be honest with you, the way I felt the day after, I swore I'd never run another marathon again. <laughs> but, you know, I found a, a sport which basically gave me a lot of confidence. Fantastic sport. The camaraderie is just fantastic. Um, and from rare, really, I just, by 1988, I decided I was going to um, become the youngest person to run 100 marathons. I achieved that in 1919. From there, just decided just to carry on, just to see how far I'd go. Mate, wonderful going and good luck for today. Let's quickly come Thank to you, you, Hazel. First ever big <laughs> run. How are you feeling? A um, bit nervous now. Yes, yeah. But Which I've never signed the form. Don't say that. Come on, I want you to focus. This is the big one for you. Talk to me about this little man here on your hand. This is Alfonso. Hello, Alfonso. How are you doing? It's all right. I wanted the MS to do a teddy, and they said they don't do them. So I made my own, and it, that's it. I'm running with him. All right. Here. Do you know what? If all else fails, just jump on his back. He knows what he's doing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, realistically, I mean, what inspired you to start running? 
I turned 70 and mm. decided that I needed to do something for me. I've yeah. done everything for the family and everything else. So I thought to do something for me. Mm. I wanted to do a 5K but couldn't find one. So I signed up for this and then realised how far it was. I thought it was a bit daftery. <laughs> but is it quite nice though to be running through Birmingham? It must be special, yes, right? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, okay. yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah. Birmingham born and bred. Well, so good, luck. Fine. good luck to the pair of you and uh, hopefully see you at the end. See you in a bit. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> hopefully. See yes, you later. Okay. Right, let's Bye. see what Chris has been up to. Yes, I'm here with Tommy Langford, British Mulloway champion, and he's out to conquer his first 10k race. Yeah, first race I've ever done. As a, you know, I've done plenty of running, but it's the first race, so I'm 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 coming to win. I am. <laughs> is, is, is this true that you run 10k nearly every day? Yeah, pretty much. It's a standard part of training for any boxer, really, is running. And I've always been a good runner, but like, uh, yeah. So it's the, it's the average sort of distance for a boxer, 10k. You know, we do that most most days of the week, really. So what time are you looking to run today? Well, my dad put a spanner in the works because before I came out today, he said, you know, the fastest I ever did it was 33 minutes. So now I've got a real time to beat, but I can't see myself eating that. I've had a bit of time off and uh, was out last night watching Anthony Joshua. So, <laughs> so if, But now if I can hit six minute more, I'll be happy. I'll be happy with that. I, I'm, I'm hoping last night Anthony Joshua's inspired you. So I wish you all the best today and good luck. Thanks very much. Cheers. You know what, it's pretty good conditions for the runners, but for me here, it's a bit of a wind tunnel, it's absolutely freezing. We've got the elite races to come up, so join us after the break. We are back at the great Birmingham 10K, and I'm joined by a legend uh, in my eyes, and many, a uh, former British world record holder, former British um, record holder and world record holder for the 5,000 metres, David Morkoff, welcome. Morning, Io. Yeah, local lad, Coventry based, I love this. Now, I mean, look, it's a bit blustery, it's a bit windy. Uh, good for the runners? The temperature's perfect, but the wind, it's gonna be a really strong wind for the first five kilometres but then a headwind all the way back. Um, but it, it's great, the, the course is undulating, 8,000 runners, 23 Commonwealth nations represented. Be a wonderful morning. Yeah, I mean, any, any particular parts of this course that some of these runners have to look out for? I mean, I grew up around here, so I, I know exactly where we are, but I mean, some of these runners will never have run this before. So any any particular difficulties? Well, through Cannon, Cannon Hill Park and uh, round about to Edge Baston, the cricket ground will be tough. But as I said, I think the hardest challenge for the, for the masses is not to go too fast too early mm. because the wind will be behind and it's slightly downhill mm. for the first 5k but you know honestly it'd be great and the elite runners will be I think breathtaking amazing now uh, you mentioned the Commonwealth Games earlier we've got a sort of a Commonwealth themed runner sort of scattered around uh, uh, and what why, why is this well the Birmingham are putting together a bid for the 2022 Commonwealth Games but the Commonwealth really represents the history of distance running you've got great nations like Kenya Uganda New Zealand and obviously England Scotland Wales Northern Ireland all represented today so you know it's a kind of statement about the history of the Commonwealth but also looking forward to hopefully brilliant events coming to Bir more brilliant events coming to Birmingham now I mean for me that would be absolutely unbelievable for this city I and mean, we can already see, see the amount of development that's happening here the Commonwealth Games coming to Birmingham would be absolutely absolutely monumental now with your racing experience and your racing pedigree I'm sure you don't get out of the track so much these days but what will be going through some of these runners minds right now We've got athletes like Viola Chepchumba from Kenya, who recently ran the second fastest ever 10,000 metres on the road. And we'll talk about more of that in commentary. And she's phenomenal. And she could get close to 30 minutes today, wow. depending wow. on what the weather is. Gemma Steele and Katrina Wooten from, from England are, you know, will be right up there. Tim Toritich from Uganda in the men's race is going to be really strong. Going through that mind at the moment, partly thinking about fast times, but mainly thinking about trying to win. Amazing, amazing. Well, look, you've got to hot foot it out of here because you and Catherine Mary are going to be doing the commentating for us. So, David, thank you very much. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Io. And uh, Catherine's going to be introducing us to the top contenders. Catherine, what's going on? Good morning, folks. Thank you, Io. Beautiful scenes here in the second city. The masses, well, they're flooding in but we're going to be led off this morning by the elite women and then closely followed by the elite men. And Dave there has given us a few names to look out for as we go along this great Birmingham 10K, 6.2 miles. 
So in terms of the elite women here today, we've got a little tasty battle potentially here in Birmingham that we're very much looking forward to. She rubs her hand, she keeps herself warm. Lucy Chariot from Kenya, the 20-year-old. She's already run five half marathons this year, including a 31-46-10K in that Prague half marathon. Now, Caroline Chepkoech Kipkarui. Now, she pacemaked for Mary Katani last week in the London Marathon. It's going to be very interesting to see how Chepkoech Kipkarui runs. Viola Jepchomba, she won the Cardiff Half Marathon previously, second in the Prague Half Marathon, behind the stunning multiple world records of Jocelyn Jepkoskai. We know she's in good form. And a big welcome, of course, back to Birmingham for Gemma Steele. She's had a reasonable start to her year. And won the Great Island Run once again this season already, back at the distances she loves. So the hooters go and the crowds cheer. The great Birmingham 10K, the elite women are up and running. Few changes to the course this year around Birmingham. But already the Kenyan contingent, the Kenyan trio, are setting off at a pace. And Dave Moorcross back with me in commentary and this is going to be very interesting day because the rumors are swirling that the kenyan trio are going to work and they're looking for a 5k best here on the roads and potentially then going forward to the 10k best yeah i'm now speaking to chris thompson who's uh, you know one of our outstanding distance runners and he said that uh, he feels that the first five kilometers could be close to world record pace which could be pretty amazing because it is downhill and the wind is behind but already chep chumber is pushing on as is uh, the rest of her Kenyan uh, teammates. So a fascinating battle potentially. Jep Chomba, Kep Choech, Kip Karui, and they've set off at a good pace. So let's have a look at the course then around Birmingham. Well, they're starting on Jennings Road, close to Millennium Point and Think Tank, and the route heads downhill through Digba before heading along Pershaw Road to the furthest turn point at Cannon Hill Park. The route winds through the park and then crosses over the road to Edgebaston Cricket Ground. They'll take a lap of the stadium. They'll return back along Pershaw Road, back through Digba, passing Selfridges, the Bull Ring Shopping Centre, before a short uphill section back to Jennings Road. And then the final fast and flat section is downhill to the finish line on Curzon Street, outside of Millennium Point. So we're going to get an indication after the first kilometre about how fast they're really going. For a 30-minute time, which would be a world record, they need to do each kilometre uh, in three minutes or slightly less. Now, my guess is they're going to be doing that, particularly because it's downhill and because the wind is strong behind. Chep Chumba is pushing on. Kip Karu is there. Lucy Chariot, who did the pacemaking last week so wonderfully well in the London Marathon, has recovered in sufficiently to believe that she can push the pace on. And I think sensibly, Gemma Steele and Katrina Wooten from England have not gone with this pace because it, it is breathtaking. Well, they've definitely set their stall out, the Kenyans, I think it's fair to say. And I think the first kilometre was 2.54, 2.55, which, as I said, is, is world record pace. That's too early to say that it will be a world record because the, the final five kilometres is into a headwind. But, but, you know, if you're going for a world record and if they believe they have the strength, then they're spot on at the moment. Well, indeed, that kind of pace would come out at about a 14.35 in terms of the 5K, so they're taking advantage of the new course and the changes that have been made here in Birmingham. But it's how the likes of Caroline Kepkoech Kipkarui has recovered from the pacemaking of for Mary Katani. We know she's in good form. 
I think, yes, for all the Kenyan athletes. You know, there are so many great Kenyan athletes now around the world doing wonderful times. And Chep Chumba came second in a, in a wonderful half marathon in, in Prague when um, she ran the second fastest ever half marathon and the second fastest 10K. And as she would like now to be not just the second fastest in the world, but the fastest in the world. And although the likes of Chariot behind her are helping her, in a sense, Chep Chumba has taken the initiative and is pushing it on. So she hasn't really got pacemakers in today. All she's got is company. And Chariot will have the marathon in her leg still. And my guess is that quite soon, Chep Chumba will be pushing it on. And as I said, once she believes and is confident that she can win the race, her focus will then turn to how fast can she run. And the big, big challenge will be the final 5K for her today, I think. So the Brits, as Dave say, working together. Katrina Wooten, Gemma Steele. Gemma Steele, of course, knows the roads of Birmingham well. She's won the half marathon here. She won that in 2013. And she's back now, Dave, Gemma Steele, being comfortable now at this distance, isn't she? We talked about her moving up to the marathon, but now she's back at the distances she loves, and she's starting to reap the rewards of that concentration. She dabbled with the marathon training, but she's back now where she's happy on the 10K and the roads. She is, and I think it's really interesting for, for both Gemma Steele and Katrina Wooten. Gemma, because I think she says, look, I'm comfortable at 10K and half marathon, and that's what I want to do. All this talk about the marathon for the moment, I want to put behind me. And for Katrina Wooten, ran a brilliant race in Brighton, recently she's had years of really bad injuries major operations she was an outstanding talent in the Bedford Club with Paula Radcliffe now runs for Cobb Diver Harriers but she's running into brilliant form and, and I think Gemma and Katrina are, are almost level in terms of times and I think they're doing absolutely the right thing and I know that for the likes of Katrina at the end of May is the uh, the night of the 10,000 meters at Highgate where she'll be looking to try alongside many other athletes to qualify for the world championships in the 10,000. So for Gemma and Katrina, they're doing exactly the right thing at this moment in the race. Well, we saw Gemma there taking a quick look at her watch, but back at the front. So they've just gone through the 2K point. And it is Jep Chomba continuing that good form. Happily taking control of this great Birmingham 10k at the moment and it's interesting Kath that, that uh, the 306 was the second kilometer which was um, much slower now whether that was a slight uphill and a slight into a headwind I don't know but Chuck Chumber is not getting a great deal of help from the likes of Lucy Chariot all she as I said has got is, is sort of company of athletes that are irritatingly about two or three meters behind and I think for Chep Chumber she'll be happy if she can make a decisive break so that you know the thoughts of whether she can win or not and you see her looking over her shoulder slightly so in her mind she's still thinking have I made a decisive break yet and she hasn't and it's that conflict of am I trying to win the race and therefore be a bit cautious or am I chasing a world record and then just throw the gauntlet down and I think in Chuck Chumba's mind at the moment she's a little bit between both both uh, objectives and for, certainly for the likes of Kip Karui and for Chariot Chip Chumba is not away yet. They're, they're in the right position. You know, they, in a sense, are controlling the race from behind and let Chip Chumba do the hard work and also you know, do the difficult, making the difficult decisions. Well, she is being the marker at the moment, Viola Jet Chumba, for her teammates to follow, to sit in her slipstream. The University of Birmingham Runners please to head to the front of the green assembly area. It's always, and, and then we have Gemma, Gemma and uh, Katrina again, Gemma Steele and Katrina Wooten, and again running their own private battle. It's always interesting, you know, Katrina's happy to take the pace, Gemma at the moment is happy to sit on the shoulder. They're racing each other, you know, at some point they might share the pace slightly, but, you know, there's no, no great love lost, huge, re great amount of respect, but each of them will be doing what they think suits themselves not necessarily trying to help each other, but I think it's good at the moment they're not running in a vacuum because they'll be chasing a, a good time, um, but at the moment they're able to, if not directly help each other, the mere fact they're running alongside each other. And now that we see that Chep Chumba has got company with Kip Karui, and Kip Karui in a sense is controlling it because 
it is expected that Chep Chumba would win. It is expected that Chep Chumba will get you know, close to a world record. But for Kip Karui at the moment, she can say, I can sit here and I don't have to worry too much because you're taking the pace, you're protecting me from the wind. And if you back off slightly, Viola, then I know I can make an attack. So at the moment, Chep Chumba is still in control, but K Kip Karui is doing absolutely the right thing. And she's got a great pedigree. Well, she has indeed, 9.07 at 3K. Jep Chumba is leading the way, but Chep Kowicz, Kip Karui, in good form, as we know, in London last week, is right on her shoulder. We'll continue coverage in the sunshine here in Birmingham right after the break. So, Welcome back to the great Birmingham 10K, the glorious green foliage of Cannon Hill Park, the most popular park in the city. And you join us with no real movement, although Jep Chumba is trying to put a foot down. As, as we say, Dave, this is a point, the entrance and exits of these two big landmarks of Cannon Hill Park, Edgebaston Cricket Ground. This is where athletes can make a move, but Jep Chumba, she's not losing or shaking off the competition at the moment as she's ploughing her way through, but it continues to, to be a battle. It is a battle, and Chip Chumber has been really happy just taking the pace on. Um, you know, for Caroline Kipkarui, she's got London Marathon, or the half marathon of the London Marathon in her legs. She's been happy in second place. Chip Chumber's attempted a couple of breaks, I think, but Kip Karui has covered both. And Kip Karui just runs to, to the outside slightly, gets on the shoulder of Chet Chumba, as if to say, look, you might be leading, but I'm still here and I'm still feeling good. And, the, you know, it's as much a psychological battle as it is physical here. Chet Chumba saying, look, I want to push on the pace and run fast kilometers, as she did in the last one, take advantage of the, the quick turns. But Kip Karui is running comfortably in second place and just occasionally moves up to Chet Chumba just to say, I'm still there, you've got a problem. Well, Edgebaston Cricket Ground, one of the most iconic sporting venues in the UK, let alone in Birmingham. But you see the two elite ladies coming round, checking of the watch by Jep Chumba. Well, we've had super cricket over the years, played in Edgebaston Cricket Ground. First test match, 1902, England versus Australia. It was drawn, Dave, because of rain. Which is unusual for Birmingham <laughs> and cricket. But the two elite ladies, <laughs> Jep Chumba and Jep Koech, Kip Karui, will enter the Edgebaston Cricket Ground. They'll do a lap, but it really is tip for tap from the two Kenyans at the moment, as we expected in this elite women's race. And so they're into the second half of the race now, and, and this is the kind of business end of it, if you like. And uh, as I said, these two athletes have huge respect for each other, but they're trying to outthink the, the, each other as a, and uh, it also obviously outrun. And, and it's fascinating for me that Kip Karui just keeps running to the side of Chep Chumba. Sometimes you tuck in behind, and at the moment, kind of Kip Karui is not just running at the side, but she's running slightly in front, almost as if she wants to take the initiative. And but for both of them, they know they can't go with too early. They know they've got to cover the potential break of their rival. But in their mind, they'll be thinking, when am I going to really make a break for home? And that will probably come in the next kilometre or so. Well, it's been set up wonderfully well from the get-go with these two elite women. They're going to crank it up. It's going to be a tear-up, isn't it, towards the end of this great Birmingham 10K. But they've done a lap of the Edgebaston Cricket Ground. They're returning now back along Pershaw Road. And they went through five kilometres in 15.05, which if they did the same time at the end would give them 30 minutes 10, which is still a very, very fast time. The world record is uh, 30 minutes four seconds held by Jocelyn Jepkoskai in that great race in, pa in Prague. So it's probably just outside of uh, world record pace. But again, you don't know how fast they're going to run over the second half or whether one of them will put in a vicious 250-something kilometre to try and make a break. And you see Wooten and Steele 
still in fourth and fifth place. Looks like Katrina Wooten, though, has extended a lead over Gemma Steele. Got a 20 odd second advantage now as Katrina Wooten. She's the leading British, leading British woman in this 10K here this morning. And for the first time, Dave, well, Kip Karui has gone into the lead, slotted in front of Jet Chumba. And, you know, really I think in her mind is is not just I'm prepared to do a bit of the pacemaking now to share the pace but actually I've got an opportunity to make a break I can detect a weakness in Chep Chumba and intuitively Chep Chumba knows that if she's going to win this race she cannot afford to let Kip Karui get away so although Kip Karui has made a little bit of a break and really tried to test Chep Chumba Chep Chumba now has tucked in behind and just said look I'm still there and this race is far from over so you know, there's a real kind of game of chess going on. Each of them trying to push the other, each of them testing the other, each of them trying to find out whether they can make a decisive break. But at the moment, both Chip Chumba and Kip Karui are locked together, and this race is far from over. And you can see, you know, Chip Chumba now thinks, I'll push on a little bit. It's great, it's fascinating. And, you know, there's so much thinking to do as well as running to do over the last four kilometers. So we're into the long home straight in this great Birmingham 10K. And it's fantastic, you know, Caroline Kip Carew is last weekend ran that fantastic half marathon during the London Marathon. And, you know, she's recovered really well from it to be here today and being competitive. And I think Lucy Chariot's really isolated there in third place. I think she's probably far enough away from Katrina Wooten, who's chasing her down to hang on to third place. But I think, you know, she's now in that kind of vacuum with no one to help her, either in front or behind, and just concentrating on keeping third. Whereas these two, it's a royal battle that is brewing up very nicely indeed. Winding through the streets of Birmingham, there's absolutely nothing between these two Kenyan athletes. It's what we expected, it's what we hoped for, Dave, because we looked on paper at all the different connotations with the form that Viola Jep Chumber is in from that Prague half marathon and the times that she ran. Then obviously the big times that Caroline Kerwich Kip Karui put down last week, pacing Mary Katani. There were so many different connotations. So far, it's, they're just inseparable and just swapping the lead left, right and centre. They are, and it shows the kind of incredible strength in depth there is in Kenyan distance running generally but with the women particularly at the moment and you know the, the, the reputations of both Chip Chumba and Kip Karui are relatively even and we thought probably the fact that um, Kip Karui had run London last week even though it was only half marathon might just take the edge but she's making another break now and she knows that she, if she's going to turn five meters into 10 into 15 20 meters clear she needs to do it now you know, the, you, you don't get too many chances to make a positive move. And at the moment, Caroline Kip Karui is making that move. Having been brave enough to, to push on, she's now got to be even braver to keep it going and not allow Chep Chumba to get back. But for Chep Chumba, just hang in there. Just make sure, you know, one or two seconds doesn't become four or five. Because at the moment, she could bridge this gap, but it's looking increasingly un unlikely because Kip Karui has the bounce in her step. Kip Karui has the confidence. Kip Kar Karui has taken the initiative. And if we look back to Viola Chepchumba, she just looks a little bit heavy-legged. She just looks like she's rolling slightly. And I think in her mind soon, she's going to be thinking, I'm not running for winning victory any longer. I'm running for second. Indeed, three kilometers to go. The screw is being turned by Chep Koech, Kip Karui. We know, we've mentioned the good form she's in and she's firmly in her racing groove so back at the start look at that a wonderful wonderful scene here in Birmingham the masses are ready and poised to take on the 10k course and as are the elite men so the elite women are up and running and there's Dan Wallace from New Zealand the winner in the great Edinburgh 10 miles, that race last week. And then the black vest of Lee Merrion. He was the first Britain home in the 2011 and the 2012 London marathons. Guernsey record holder in eight events. 
trying to get back into his racing groove. And Franklin Kataini, this is his first race outside of Kenya. We're welcoming here to Birmingham. A lot of people's dark horse in this race, Franklin Kataini. But there is Timothy Teratic, the Ugandan team captain at the World Cross Country in Kampala this year. He placed ninth individually, but his team won a bronze, potentially the favorite here in the men's elite race. So they're poised, fingers on watches, hooters are going. So the masses are streaming through. Different waves in this great Birmingham 10K. Viola man there going through on the left, there he is. <laughs> but a great waves this year, as, as our viewers will know, in, in mass distance running. We've got the Challenger wave up first, these guys who want to get a time, but then we have a music-based waves, don't we, of the today music, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. You can start in whichever genre you want. It is, you just said that the, the, these guys are looking for a fast time and they just want to get close to the front early on. But for the rest of the waves, it, it's kind of an opportunity to reflect the the generation that you're most interested in, 70s, 80s, 90s, as you said. But a fascinating battle at the front. A fascinating battle indeed. We'll catch up with the masses later in the programme, but the elite men are up and running. Can we look past Timothy Teratic, Dave Moorcroft? Well, he on is the, the left. He is the favourite, as you said, and has got a great reputation on the track, on the road and cross country. But a lot of people believe this young lad, Franklin mm. Kitani, uh, in the black singlet, has, is, a, is a great talent for the future and, you know, won't let Toratic have it his own way. And there's always a nice little battle between Uganda and Kenya in any race like this. They, they, I think they're good friends. Probably a lot of the Ugandan athletes train with the Kenyans, but it will be fascinating today. It will indeed. Masses. Every single one of them, Dave, starting their own watch. <laughs> they are. And the 10K is a lovely distance. You know, a lot of athletes now are very comfortable running 5K. They have aspirations to run half marathon and, you know, potentially the marathon in, the, the, uh, marathon in Birmingham in October later this year. But for all of them, they've got their own little battle, their own little uh, personal objective and rep reflecting 23 Commonwealth nations today. Well, the Commonwealth is being well represented. And here at the head of the elite women's race, well, Kip Karui is just increasing her lead over Jep Chumba. It was close for the first five or six kilometers. Then the Kenyan decided to put a foot down. So she's heading towards Selfridges. And you look at the kilometre splits, 303, 317, and then a little bit of a pickup on the pace, Dave, at six and seven. Well, six and seven was where the damage was done. She ran 251, which is well under world record pace, followed by 256, which is also under world record pace. And that was, that was when she broke Chep Chumba. You know, that was when the real pain was felt with by Chep Chumba. And that was a, you know, a really impressive two kilometers to really do serious damage. And actually put herself back close to world record pace. 309 is more relaxed. And I think in a focus at the moment, she knows she's going to run a fast time, but more importantly, Kip Karui is going to win this race and that'll be really impressive. Well, a wonderful shot of the Bull Ring Shopping Centre. One hundred and forty stores opened in two thousand and three. Just one of the many developments in the Birmingham city centre. The skyline is changing on a monthly basis. But Kip Karui, she's not interested in any of that at the moment. She's just looking to take the title here at the Great Birmingham 10K. And we can see that it's a slight hill here. Um, but she won't really be feeling that pain. It, it's a wonderful feeling to be clear and to know you're going to win. And really to only have to think about how fast can I run, how fast do I want to run. You know, but for a woman that ran 
the half marathon during the London Marathon last year, pacemaking Mary Katani. It's astonishing that she's recovered so quickly, but it just shows what a class athlete she is over any distance, and certainly the 10K today. She's going to be relatively close to the world record. Which is a great run. She got everybody excited with that pacing last week for Mary Katani when she set, of course, the women's only marathon record, 2.17.01. Mary Katani ran, and it was the pacing of Caroline Chepkoech Kip Karui that made us think, you know what, when she comes to Birmingham against Jep Chomba, let's see how she's recovered, let's see how she runs dropping down in this distance, and she showed us convincingly today, Dave, at that six or seven kilometre point that she was up, she was away, masses on the left, elite runner on the right. <laughs> and that's lovely for her to watch the masses go out. It just kind of gives you a little bit of a spur, and the, the, the runners on the uh, left of the picture will be cheering her on so she'll kind of begin to feel the atmosphere of the finish she's still got a couple of minutes to go 800 meters to go a little bit more than two minutes but you know she'll be lifted by the crowd lifted by the fact she's into the last half mile of the race but particularly lifted by the fact that she's beaten a really class athlete in viola chepchumba and is going to win this race 28 39 it's going to be outside the world record catherine but it's going to be still a fast fast time well, she had help with a teammate for the first half and the crowds lining the street here in Birmingham, appreciating what they're seeing here. Very much so. And, you know, Birmingham crowds love athletics. They've got the world indoors coming next year. But they've got a tra just great tradition of running in Birmingham, but a huge tradition of fantastic community events. But those events led by some of the greatest runners in the world. And often they happen to be Kenyan athletes. <laughs> 2.53.49 at two kilometres for the men. They're making their way through the streets of Birmingham. But it's all about the final few metres for today's winner in the elite women, Caroline Kepkoic Kipkarui. Well, we asked the question, she's came and she's delivered. She had a quick cheeky look over her shoulder. I don't think she's got anything to worry about in any shape or form. As she comes home towards the final part it's a big breakthrough. It's a big breakthrough year for us so far with what she's been doing just in the last couple of weeks alone. It is a big breakthrough year. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of her career pans out. Where does she focus on? But you know, 200 metres to go is a wonderful sign. You've done all the hard work and you know that you're getting close to the finish and the hard work is all over. And actually, in her mind now, she knows she's not going to break the world record. That's for the future. And we can see Chuck Chumba probably closing a little bit now. But it's too late because Caroline Kipkarui has run magnificently today and is going to win this race. Well, she was the African junior 5,000 meter champion in 2011. She ably assisted Mary Katani last week to that women's only world record in the marathon. And really, with a spring in a step, Caroline Kepkoech Kipkarui wins the Great Birmingham 10K. Unofficially about 30 minutes, 45 seconds. And Viola Jepchumba will take second place here today in Birmingham. About 11 seconds behind her teammate. She just couldn't handle the pace of Kip Karui in the final few kilometers. It was a good elite women's race there. The first two will keep you up to speed with the other finishers. And back to the men's race. And as expected, Katani and Torotic battling it out. Torotic has done a lot of the leading, actually. A little bit like the, men, uh, the women's race with Chep Chumba. And Katani has just tucked in. But now Katani is doing that. I'm running on your shoulder. I'll run next to you just to make sure you know that I'm there. And we're into a similar sort of psychological battle as we had with the women's race. Two fantastic athletes, one from Uganda, one from Kenya, just going through three kilometers. Still seven to go. Lots of time for lots more thinking and running. But at the moment, the two athletes are running shoulder to shoulder, but neither of them have really tried to make a decisive break. So Katani, the Kenyan Defence Forces cross-country champion. In their championships, he was in second place, but we're told by those that watch it, it was a dead heat. 
So we know he's in good form as Chariot comes across the line in third place, really was isolated early doors in that elite women's race. A solo run for the third place today in the Great Birmingham 10K. Yeah, she ran most of the seven kilometres, uh, the last seven kilometres on her own in, in kind of a vacuum um, and finished a minute and 32 behind Kip Karui. But it is a, a one, two, three, probably as expected for Kenya. But it'll be interesting to see who's won the battle of the British athletes, uh, Katrina Wooten and Gemma Steele in particular. Well, they were just a little bit behind in their own personal battle, and it's Katrina Wooten that's leading the way, 200 metres to go. And she looks pretty comfortable as well, to be fair, Dave. She does look comfortable, and she, you know, she's comfortable in fourth pace, so there's no point pushing on, doing that thing that all runners do, looking at their watch, checking their time. But she'll, you know, she'll be delighted to have beaten Gemma because Gemma's a class athlete. And really, it was a personal battle between the athletes from England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, the British athletes. And for Katrina, it's a fantastic statement that she's back after awful injuries, operations, and this will be a huge boost for her confidence as she goes towards the, the Highgate night of the 10,000 metres where she'll try to qualify for the World Championships. Good fourth place there. Indeed, fourth place for Katrina Wooten, the good running in Brighton, as Dave mentioned, now backed up with that fourth place here in Birmingham. It's great, isn't it, when you finish it? Why do I do that? But she knows why she does it, she loves it. And there's the, the two leading athletes, Kenya on the right and Katani, Uganda on the behind him in Toritic. Toritic, the guy with the experience. But a lot of people, particularly Noah Nien, a former Olympic 1500 meter champion, who really believes, who works with Katani, believes that Katani's got a bit of a future. And this is the, the British battle. Again, rather like the women's race, sort of isolated, but running together for the bragging rights for the athletes from Britain, primarily Britain. Yep, third, fourth, fifth and sixth place in the men's. And Gemma Steele, fifth place in the women's race. She's won here in Birmingham before over the longer distance. But her decent start to 2017 continues. The second Brit home today in the great Birmingham 10K. So Gemma Steele finishes in fifth in the elite women's. But what's fascinating about this elite men's race, it's kind of started already to develop into the same race as the elite women's day, with it's a two-horse race. <laughs> it's, it, it's back and forth, and it, it's going to be another another super battle. We've got a great view of uh, Edgebass then again, and the two, the two guys, the two main athletes, are going through the same sort of thought process as the women did, um, concentrating on making sure they don't lose contact, but also thinking to themselves, when do I want to make a break? And that, that is a really important decision that, that they have to make in the next kilometre or two. So they're into Cannon Hill Park. Got everything in Cannon Hill Park, boating, fishing, tennis, lakes. That's why there's 250 acres of it. It really is a beautiful park. And these guys really taking their battle into the park. It was a 2.47.69 at four kilometers. Yeah, and they're running consistently around about 2.45 per kilometer. And as you said, Cannon Hill Park is a beautiful park. Lots of people do lots of running. But for these two guys, they're not really tourists today. They're racers. Well, and that was, that 2.47 was the quickest kilometer so far in this men's elite race. Franklin Katani, first time he's raced outside of Kenya. As we mentioned, much excitement in the world of athletics about this young man, and he really is giving Toritich a good run here. He is, and you know, we often see with the emergence of great Kenyan athletes, they race in events like this and, and sort of begin to, to establish their reputation and then go on to greater things. It's a big step to run your first race outside of Kenya and to try and take on one of the most kind of established distance runners in the world. Toritic is you know, Olympic finalist at 10,000 metres. He's a, a world medalist in the team uh, event at the uh, recent World Cross Country Championships in his home country in, in Kampala. And he's got a great reputation on the road. And for the youngster, Franklin Kitani, he's learning a great deal today. Well, he is learning and he's also still in the mix to potentially win this great Birmingham 10K. So the lap around Edgebaston Cricket Ground 
the same dual battle that we had in the elite women's, the more experienced Toratic. Katani on his shoulder. Well, we've had the conclusion of the elite women, and it's once again a two-horse race in the elite men as they go around Edgebaston Cricket Ground. We so... Saw, sorry, Catherine, we, we saw them go through 5K, and I think about 14.30. It was difficult to tell. Um, but we're now into the real business end of the race. You know, the, the end where, in their mind, they'll be thinking, although it's into the wind, sometimes they're not going to make a break. Don't go anywhere. It's going to hot up, and we're not quite sure who's going to win the Elite Men's Great Birmingham 10K, so join us after the break. Welcome back to the Great Birmingham 10K. There's been no changes over the advert break. They are still stuck together like glue. You've got Katani on the left. You've got Toratic on the right. And nothing in between them at all. And the pace to me, Dave, it looks like the cadence is increasing slightly. We're turning over. We look at the 5K split times, 14.30. Well, you had a very fast kilometre, 2.46, um, a few moments ago. And that was when... Katani just put his head down, and now we've got Matthew Klaus, who's the first of the British athletes in third place. It's a terrific run for him, running in the England vest. But Katani and Toritic are really battling it out. Got the advantage of going past a few runners, having athletes to their side. But at the moment, you kind of look like Katani at seven kilometres. He's just trying to make a bit of a break and Toricic is just happy to cover it. So there's three kilometers to go. Toricic coming off the cross country. How hard is that, Dave? You're looking at a guy that ran in the World Cross Country Championships just weeks ago, different terrain, now coming onto the roads, a hard transition. He makes that transition smoothly. He's a, a great road runner, cross country runner, and track runner. He does it all very smoothly. And as I said, he's very, very experienced. And his experience might count today because Katani is inexperienced relatively but super talented and is learning in his first race outside of Kenya first big race this is his learning a great deal and you know this race is still plenty more to do they make a quick turn and sometimes athletes use the turn as an opportunity just to grab a couple of yards and then make those yards into you know, more meters but at the moment they're locked together and it's difficult to believe and see who's going to make the break and who's going to make the uh, who's going to take this title so fourth and fifth places here just through the seven kilometer mark it's daniel cliff on the left of the from liverpool harriers and oh. richard goodman on the right sitting in behind cliff so they've got their own little battle going on as well really has been quite separated and segmented hasn't it even though it's only a 10k 6.2 mile course we've had a lot of little groups going on in terms of pairs running together and these two are leading the way still and absolutely nothing between them it, it's a real dilemma for the british athletes male and female is whether to run your own private battle between the, the athletes that you're likely to be competing against for trying to get into British or Commonwealth, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Commonwealth teams, or whether to take on the great Africans. And I think they made the right decision today because Katani and Toritic are in a different class. And at the moment, you cannot separate the two of them. You know, it's going to be really tough for both of them as they go up a slight incline, huge levels of concentration here. And despite the fact that they're bouncing along and look pretty comfortable, both of them will be getting increasingly tireder and tireder the fatigue will be there and physically it's hard but mentally it's really tough now because at some point one of them has to make that decisive break and neither of them know pretty much about the other so still in third in terms of the first british athlete is matthew Klaus from cardiff again what Runs for Cardiff, but with an England vest on, which is interesting. <laughs> but again, he's isolated in third, but he won't 
mind that one little bit. He's running a good race today, running up that incline. But, you know, for him, he's bouncing along very well and he looks very comfortable. And he's looking at his watch because he's running his own personal race today against the time. But hopefully, if we've got it right, to finish third, which will be terrific. So as Klaus plows on, here you go. Eight kilometres. The last kilometre was covered in 2.45. You kind of get the feeling that it's going to be a sprint finish, Catherine, <laughs> which just is your, like ter your territory. Once they hit like 400 the metres to go, <laughs> but but you know, for both athletes now, they're thinking, look, I haven't made a break yet. There's less than 2k. Maybe one more break to make, one more effort to make to try and try and move away before you get into the last 400 metres. But equally, at the back of their mind is the thought that if I can't get away, then I'm going to have to wait for 400 to go. And then it's a decision: do I go with 400 to go, 200 to go? When do I make that break? Because within the last kilometre, you really only have one chance to make a decisive break. You only get one chance, and you have to be as certain as you can be when you put your foot down, when you kick, that you can keep that going right to the end. A beautiful shot of the Ball Ring Shopping Centre. The masses you see there streaming through. 8,000 runners due to take part today. We're at the top end of the field. We had a wonderful battle for the first few kilometres in the women's elite race. And it was Caroline Chepkowicz, Kip Karui, who won that one. And in terms of the men, we're just not quite sure who's going to take the title here. Klaus is running extremely well, ran a great run in Cheshire. 10K in March, a 29-29 10K personal best. He's continuing his good form, is the James Thee coached athlete. In third place at the moment, isolated in this great Birmingham 10K. Sub-30 10K running is, is fast and, you know, hopefully he's going to break 30 and, and finish second today. But these two guys are locked together as they have been pretty much since the start. They won't be talking to each other. They'll, they'll try not to acknowledge each other at the moment, but they'll try and take some sort of physical and psychological advantage, trying to pretend that they feel really good and, and, and you know, try to make the other athlete feel anxious. The experienced athlete in Toritic the relatively inexperienced athlete in Katani, but both of them outstanding talents, and my guess is going to be a real, real fast what last one kilometres and quite an eventful one. It's wonderful to see two great athletes locked together. They're through nine kilometres, they're into the last kilometre. They have to be concerned that they don't go too early, but equally don't let the other get away. And we have no idea who has the fastest finish, but we're going to find out soon. <laughs> we are indeed as the splits go scrolling through the screen or into the final kilometre. For me, Katani keeps doing a little bit of a nudging forward, but he just cannot shake Toritic, which is understandable. Toritic there digging in on the slight uphill section. Mass is on the left as we come into the final stages of the elite men here at the Great Birmingham 10K. One of the things about the last sort of kilometre of a race is the finish looks closer than it is. You'll see the, the crowd at the finish, they'll see the stanchions at the finish, they're going through 800 metres to go, but that's still two laps of the track, that's still a long way. Although the, this finish looks quite close, so often athletes go a fraction too early. Toritic is the experienced one, Katani is the youngster establishing his reputation, and it's going to be a last, fascinating last 400 metres. The 22-year-old Katani taking on the 25-year-old Ugandan Toritic. They're coming into the final section. They've been neck and neck throughout the whole course around Birmingham here this morning. Katani, his first ever race outside of Kenya, looking for victory here in the second city but the Ugandan team captain at the World Cross Country Championships is not going to give up without a fight, nearly brushing shoulders, knocking elbows. It's the final few hundred metres here in Birmingham. Kenya have won the elite women's race. Can they do the double with the elite men as well? Katani takes the inside line. Toritich has swung back inside. He's going to go down to the wire. It is great because Katani tried to make a bit of a break. Toritic followed it. Will experience tell or will the new kid on the block find just that little bit extra to try and win this race? Well, Katani's buoyed by being stuck 
to Timothy Toritic. That's the widest gap between these two athletes that we've had in terms of horizontally. They're still neck and neck, there's nothing between them. But Katani's taking the advantage. Oh, swings in. Toritic adjusts his steps. Swing in and slightly block out Toritic. And Katani's made a break. It's a sprint finish. It's a head on shot. But Katani, is he going to get his first victory outside of Kenya? He is indeed. What a finish. Such a sure run in off the barriers into the final finish line. Well, he's never raced outside of Kenya, Franklin Katani. I think it's fair to say, with his first victory and a victory in the Great Birmingham 10K, Dave Moorcroft, he enjoyed that. He enjoyed it, and it was a terrific <laughs> race, and there they are shaking hands. You know, but Katani, as he came into that last barrier, I don't know whether he was aware of it, how, how close the barrier was to the finish, but he just slightly blocked off Toritic. It was all perfectly legal, but he just slightly blocked off Toritic, and then he got it on his toes, and he made that kind of decisive break. And it looked at one moment as if Toritic might just ease back onto his shoulder, but Katani had done enough, and it was that tactical decision, that technical decision, aligned with great pace. And here's Matthew Clouds coming in third place. And it is at 29.35 at the moment. I think he's going to break, hopefully, maybe get close to 30 minutes. But that's a terrific run. He's got a personal best of 29.29. He ran in Cheshire, as Catherine said earlier. But the most important thing today is that he's going to be the probably the only British athlete to get on the podium in either the men's or the women's races. Really close to 30 minutes. Just under, I think. Brilliant run. Fantastic performance there. He was also figuring problems in the national. And now Goodman and Cliff locked together in fourth and fifth. But I'm sure he's very, very happy with that going into the high gate night of 10,000 meter PBs. And this is Goodman. Here they go. And, and they've got, they're looking forward. They've run this 10 kilometer race on the road. As we said earlier with the women's race, with half a mind on the, the high gate night of 10,000 meters when many British athletes will be trying to run a, a qualifying time for the world championships. So this is perfect preparation for the likes of Klaus, Goodman and Cliff. They'll be happy with their runs today. Yeah, good for them to assess before the Highgate event at the end of May. Wallace comes in in six. Dan Wallace runs for Belgrade, but from New Zealand. And there's the top three. So it was a good elite men's race, wasn't it? Clowns getting on to the rostrum, as you say. And good running by Toritic and Katani as well. Two really good elite races. The battles that we expected, the race that we expected. I enjoyed that day. It was, and maybe not quite the outcome <laughs> we expected. I think probably at the beginning we thought Toritic would would win it, and that that we'd see Katani emerge as a as a you know as a valiant silver medalist. But it, it wasn't that at all. You know, Katani, I think this is his first victory, his first race outside of Kenya. But my guess is we're going to hear a lot of him in the future. And it'll be interesting to see whether he sees his future on the track over five or 10,000 metres, or whether ultimately he'll join that line of incredible te uh, marathon runners from Kenya. Well, both the elite races are done and dusted, and they were pretty exciting ones as well. But there you see the masses, the other 8,000 or so runners making their way around the city of Birmingham. It's good weather, good racing conditions, and we enjoyed very much the two elite races. Now, so many people do these runs for so many different reasons. Now, some of the tales that come out of this are some really, really special stories. Now, we have been lucky to follow a young woman called Kelly Jackson, and this is her tale. Life before my accident didn't involve running at all, not at all, I wasn't really that fit. I was in a car accident on Sunday the uh, 19th of May 2013. I don't really remember the accident. I was found about half a mile away from my house on about four o'clock Sunday morning. I was found in my pyjamas and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt and the only kind of reason as to why I'd be in the car at those hours of the morning would be sleepwalking. I wouldn't have left the house without putting my lipstick on, let alone in my pyjamas. 
I was in a coma at the QE intensive care or critical care for about a month. Um, my family didn't know if I'd wake up. Well, obviously, I lost my leg, <laughs> about two inches above my knee. I had burn scars. Um, I had a brain injury. Um, my right frontal lobe of my brain, which apparently is supposed to make you depressed, and I've been nothing but happy since. <laughs> it really is as if I've uh, had to start life again. I had to learn how to walk. I had to learn how to communicate with people. The brain injury makes me really, really forgetful of the day-to-day -day things. I want to give back to the people that have helped me build my confidence and help me just be positive throughout life because I haven't done that all on my own. So Mark Patterson, first amputee to run the Great Wall of China Marathon, um, he got me my blade very kindly for fundraising for a few years. So now I'm going to do the same to get Hannah Moore a blade. Hannah Moore is a baloney amputee, but she's going to do the 10K with me. I can't put into words how incredible my surgeon is or has been. Well, I say surgeon, there's been a few surgeons that have worked on rebuilding my life. I'm sure there were times when I thought, oh my God, I'll never get back into work, I'll never get a boyfriend, I'll never do this, never do that, I'll never be able to, you know, just little things that you take for granted. But I don't dwell on things like that. I don't, I, don't, I think, well, this is my life now, and I'm gonna live it the way I can and make it as positive as possible. There's no enjoyment of the actual run. I'm, I'm not a runner, but I'll be very, very emotional at the end. So Nicholas, what is the motivation of running the Birmingham 10K today? Uh, it's a memory of my mum who uh, died of uh, lung cancer a few years ago and I think I wanted to prove to myself that I can do this. Um, I've lost 10 stone and this is my, my end goal. Like I said, I've done 10K and, and it's a fantastic place to do it. Oh, fantastic. 10 stone? 10 stone, yeah, it sounds like, doesn't it? But, uh, I think the inspiration was uh, becoming a father of twins and chasing after them, the, the, the hard work and chasing one one way and one the other way and I think I knew I had to get the weight off and I just had a goal and I just, just went for it. So running a 10k you must do that every day chasing after twins? More or less, yeah, one that way, one that way and that's it, just, just chase them left and right. They, they, they keep number toes every day basically, so it's, it's, it's all good fun now, I, I enjoy it, I do enjoy it. So what are you planning to run today, what kind of time? Uh, anything under an hour I'd be happy with, but um, yeah, anything under an hour I'd be happy with that, I think. That'd be a good time for me. Oh, listen, all the best and good luck. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. So let's confirm the result then of the Elite Women Simply Health Great Birmingham 10K, a Kenyan 1-2-3. It really was a great battle, but it was a battle that was won by Carolyn... Chepkoech, Kip Karui from Viola Chepchumba, and Lucy Chariot picked up third, and good running as well by the British lasses of Katrina Wooten and Gemma Steele. And the men had a super battle as well, didn't they? But it was Kenya and Franklin Katani that came out with a 28-41 second win. Timothy Tarotic today, the Ugandan. He had to settle for second, but good running by Matt Clowes, the Cardiff athlete. 30 minutes exactly for third. So the elites may have finished, but the masses are up and running. As you'd expect, crowds lining the streets of Birmingham, men dressed in pink tutus. You can only do that in certain races. <laughs> <laughs> Ambition, either to finish or raise loads of money for the charities closest to their heart. They meet people, they, they, they create new friendships, and, uh, but more importantly, they're just doing something wonderful for health and fitness. And, uh, and they run past iconic places like Edgebaston Cricket Ground. Well, you know what, I spoke to many Brummies, obviously, living here of how excited they were to just run on the roads that they drive to work in on Monday to Friday. They're closed and they can run on them around the iconic venues like the Cannon Hill Park and the Edge Baston Cricket Ground. And as you say, we talk about the elites looking forward to potentially Highgate and that big night of 10K running for British teams and selection and whatnot. But so many of these runners, Dave, are looking as a marker um, to assess their form for the Great Birmingham Run, the Half Marathon and the first Birmingham International Marathon on the 15th of October. And there you go, Dave. That you, you, yeah. you, lent, you lent him your lawnmower. Absolutely, yeah, getting the pitch ready. And uh, 
It's, it's kind of the athletes running around it. You know, Birmingham is an iconic city for so many different reasons. You know, sport, all different di different sports. But we see these athletes here. You know, running and athletics is so much part of the DNA in Birmingham. You know, great athletes of the past, Commonwealth Games gold medalists like Ian Stewart, Mary Stewart. You've got athletes like Kelly Southers and Catherine Merry. And that's the last wave, I think, of runners as they be begin to uh, their adventure around the streets of Birmingham over 10k. Indeed, the pink wave, 1970s music was their selection. This is absolutely wonderful to see so many people from the locality taking it onto the streets. It's almost as if they've been unleashed now. It's also so really nice for me to see some parts of the city where I've grown up as well. But we'll be back here in Birmingham a little later. So join us after the break. On well, their well, feet, there's a little program called the Five to uh, Fight from Couch to t 5K Run, which is basically trying to get local people who've never given running a go just to give it a try. And there are many people here doing it for so many different reasons and some wonderful stories that have been unearthed. And I think Christian Malcolm is out there with some people. Christian, where are you at? Good morning. Good morning. And, and who are we today? University of Birmingham team. And, and, and why are we running? Oh, we are running because we want to get people into fitness, whatever their level, whether they're already an established runner, whether they've joined a running club because they want to do it for fun, or whether they've never run a 10K ever before in their life. So am I right in, in thinking that this is your first Birmingham 10K, all of you? Yeah, this is my uh, very first Birmingham 10K, and uh, I'm really excited. I can't wait to run it. Yeah, I've done lots of 10Ks before, but this is my first Birmingham 10K, so uh, I can't wait. Oh, brilliant. And, and is this your first 10K? Uh, it's my second. However, for the first time, there will be 400 University of Birmingham people in blue shirts standing beside me on the start line, which will be a pretty uh, electric atmosphere, I think. So, no, really exciting. So is it your job to encourage everyone and get everyone through to the finish line? Yeah, definitely. We're really excited. Everyone's been training really hard and uh, really ready to get going. So we've got uh, banners all around the course. So have a look out for these and it'll be good fun. Definitely. Well, listen, good luck. Don't injure yourselves and enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Good, good. Dave. Am I right? Is this your sixth great series run this year already? It is indeed, sir. Yes, yes. We've done the winter run, uh, two in Dublin, two in Edinburgh last week, and we're going to attempt the Birmingham 10K today. And, and when is the next one? Where to? Uh, next one is next week. It's Bristol. I'm about three events in front of the mountain. Next week is Bristol. Then we've got a week off, and then we've got the Stirling Marathon the following week. And then I looked at the calendar after that, but uh, yeah. It's so, coming along quick so, so what made you attempt the, the, the whole Great Series run? Well, you know, I've done the, this will be my 15th Great North this year. And uh, over the past sort of five or six years, when we've come back from it, we've enjoyed it. And we've done other so, um, great runs. And we keep on. You know, one of the years, it'd be great to attempt them all. Is it going to be this year? Is it going to be this year? Well, this year is actually my 60th year. So we said, you know what? As it's, me, as it's my 60th, shall we attempt it? So here we are. And uh, we're on race number six already. Uh, congratulations. All the best today and I hope you enjoy it. Indeed. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank Cheers, you. David. Cheers, Thank Maddie. You. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers, mate. You guys are supporting the bid for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Is this right? Yes, yes, definitely we, we totally are. are. Birmingham is the place to be. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a true representation of the Commonwealth. So why not Birmingham, really? Why, why not? Why not? I, and yourself, you support Birmingham as well? All the way, yes. We have a lot to offer here in the city. Yes. So what countries are, are we talking about? Where are you all from? You are? I am from the Emerald Isle of Montserrat. Montserrat. Trinidad and Tobago. Grenada. Grenada. Am I right in saying that you ran a 10K yesterday? Yes, that's right. And I'm here again today. And <laughs> how's the body feel? Fantastic. Great. Ready to go again. 
you look very fresh, you know, it's very early. I don't think if I run a 10K, it would take me a good maybe six months to recover. <laughs> no, I feel fine. Could do it again today. I'm looking to do it under one hour. So fingers crossed, everything goes Wow, wow. I, I, and are you all looking to keep up? Are you all looking to keep up? Well, I think she's already set the target for everybody, so we, we'll definitely look out for her cape. Wow. This, listen, I wish you guys all the best of luck today, and make sure you keep up with Vanessa, okay? Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So great to see so many Commonwealth runners. Now let's go to Catherine Mary to see how today's races have gone. Thank you, Aya. Well, we started first up. It was the elite women that were up and running. The first action of the morning. It was always going to be a Kenyan battle, and it did start out with the three Kenyans and the two British athletes having their own little battle behind. It was a case of whether Jep Chumba could get the better of her teammate, Kip Karui. It was about 15.26 through the 5K point. There really was nothing between the two leading Kenyans. But at about the 6 or 7K point, Kip Kurui, who paced Mary Katani to that women's world record in the marathon just last week, that pulled away from her teammate. The world record was gone after about five or six kilometers, but it was Kip Kurui who took the great Birmingham 10K title and a teammate, Jep Chumba, came in second. So it was a Kenyan one, two, three, but it was good running as well by the British athletes of Wooten, Steele, who came in fourth and fifth. And the elite men had waited patiently and this once again was going to be a really interesting battle. Timothy Toratich on the left, the Ugandan team captain at the recent World Cross Country Championships. He set out well, as did Franklin Katani. And just like the women's race, it became a two-horse race as they swung in round the iconic landmarks of Cannon Hill Park, a lap of Edgebaston Cricket Ground as well. It really was bubbling up nicely. Matt Clowes was running well in good form this year the Cardiff AC athlete, but it came down to the final few metres in the elite men's race. And it was Katani, he'd never raced outside of Kenya before. He had the final burst of speed. And Katani, first race outside of Kenya. He was the great Birmingham 10K champion, beating Timothy Toratic. Good running by Klaus on the podium as well. So Kenya, Uganda and Great Britain, Katani, Toratic and Klaus. It was a good Simply Health Great Birmingham 10K run. Wonderful stuff. Now we are here with both the male and female elite winners. And David, do you want to take this? Well, I mean, Caroline ran a fantastic race today to win that after running the half marathon at the London Marathon uh, last weekend. And for Franklin, first race outside of Kenya ever to establish himself being Tim beating Timothy Toratic, mm. the, you know, the, the well-respected Ugandan. Mm -hmm. Great race by both of them. And, and Caroline, how, how was that run for you? How was the run for you, Caroline? Great. I enjoyed the course. And uh, what do you think of the crowd here in Birmingham? Were they very supportive? Was the crowd in Birmingham very supportive? Yeah, I'm happy to win. Great Birmingham 10K 2017. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to win. I, I thank God for this victory he gave me today. Yes. And uh, Franklin, yeah. how, how was the race for you? The, the race was good. I, I, this is my first time to come to Birmingham and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I won the race and it's my first oh, race. And uh, the, the, the crowd, the, the, the crowd. people on the, on the sidelines, yeah, did you I, enjoy the cheering I, they gave you? Yeah, I enjoyed uh, the course. It's flat, mm -hmm. good. Ne next time I will invite you, me, mm -hmm. I will come. Wonderful stuff. Now, and, and Dave, I mean, th this is really fantastic to see. A lovely sprint finish there for the men's. Lucy. It was right down to the wire, and I don't, don't know whether Franklin thought about it, but his tactics over the last 100 metres, blocking off Timotic, was great. But, you know, Kenya have had such a fantastic part of the history of distance running in the world, as we said earlier, and this has a Commonwealth theme today. And Kenya won two, three in the women's race, Kenya won in the men's, Uganda two, and, you know, we're delighted that Klaus got the third 
uh, for, for England uh, in the men's 10k as well. And Katrina Wooten as well in the women's race coming forth. So a brilliant celebration of running today. Yeah, it is a wonderful celebration for running and, and what a wonderful finish as well to the race. It was, and you know, Caroline really outthought out her rival today, made a break two kilometers from the finish. But Franklin was prepared to wait until the last 100 metres for to make that kick. And this is a guy we're going to hear a lot of in the future. His first race outside of Kenya, not quite Kenyan weather today, <laughs> um, but, a, but a tremendous run. And you know, he'll join, I think, a long line of, of fantastic Kenyan athletes that, mm. that just continue that wonderful tradition. I'm not sure it's ever Kenyan weather here in Birmingham, but either way, thank you guys very much and congratulations. Well done. Now let's get back out there to see all the people enjoying the race. And this must be one of the most enjoyable moments though. You're finished, you're channeling through, you're seeing your friends and your family. You're going for your Sunday lunch after completing the great Birmingham 10K. So much support. You can see some real windy parts of the section here in Birmingham today, but such an achievement by all of the runners. Many will see back here in October, I'm sure, over the half marathon and the marathon distance. We've heard from so many stories today. We'll be keeping an eye out. Remember Hazel early on, Hazel Williams, wishing she'd never signed the paper. We'll try and keep an eye on where Hazel is around the 10K course. And all friends, family and relatives looking to see exactly where their friends and family are. Slightly new route, hopefully you've enjoyed that descent down here into Curzon Street. If you are just coming down that hill and you're turning right towards the finish, you can hear up here. Well, there's a big Commonwealth theme as we've been mentioning throughout the programme here today. Such representation. Pershaw Road, a wash with people taking on the 10K here today in Birmingham. Some walking, it doesn't matter. They will be completed. They will finish their 10K course. And you can see all the messages scrolling through. Good luck messages for all those taking part here today. And indeed, congratulations to Ethan McLaughlin, who was awarded a first from Queen's University, Belfast, despite undergoing treatment, testicular cancer at 21 years old. Well done to him. Love the fact that whenever they're tired, people will still find a camera en route of any road race to give their friends and family a wave. So the elite races are done and dusted. The masses are still making their way round the second city in Birmingham. Time for a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Look at that, Birmingham City Football Club, Zulu Army. Now, uh, just seen uh, Kelly Southerton actually just finish her race. Looking good, congratulations to her. But you know, as I said before, you know, so many people are running these races uh, and these runs for so many different reasons. Some stories inspirational and some rather unique. Now this is a tale of a man who dresses as a viola. Let's take a look. So my name is Alistair Rutherford. So I started playing the violin when I was five years old and then I switched on to the viola when I was ten. Now I'm the final year of my undergraduate at Birmingham Conservatoire. With the athletics, I only got into that in about 2013. There were many similarities between athletics and music. I uh, know I really enjoy having the two goals and bringing them together in such a ridiculous fashion. 
and I'm fundraising and getting awareness for a charity I work for called Arco. It's a learning collaboration between Soweto in Johannesburg and Birmingham Conservatoire's Strings Department. And it gives 24 string students in Soweto the opportunity to learn and thrive playing string instruments. They have Skype lessons every week, so I have two students. I teach them for half an hour every Friday. So to provide this opportunity for them on a completely free of charge basis has been life-changing for them and also the teachers involved. It's a really great costume, it's really lightweight. It's made by a friend and designer in Liverpool, Brian D. Hanlon. However, the only issue is because it transforms me to about 10 foot tall. It means any sort of headwind gets entirely exaggerated. You might think I'm slightly crazy running around in this big viola, but it's, it's kind of just a small message of what we're trying to achieve, really. It's wholly the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life. Ridiculous or brave, there he is finishing the race. I did see him earlier. I thought that costume has got to be absolutely roasting in today's weather. But I kind of love the attention to detail. Hair and costume are exactly the same colour. And he's actually speaking to Christian right now. Mr. Viola, man, how did that feel? That was excellent, incredibly windy. My hat nearly fell off, but I really enjoyed it. So you managed to keep the gear on then? Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, it wanted to escape my head, but no, it, it stayed intact, ready for the marathon on October the 15th. I'm hopefully going to break the Guinness World Record there. Pleased with the time? Yeah, it was all right. I mean, it was far off my best, but I raced on Friday, so it was great just to get stuck in, you know, really great. So I see you got your team with you, so are you going to play us out? Yes, I think so. Take it away. <laughs> This is the 40-minute pacing coming in here. But remember, this was a very big wave. They started it's well. well done. Well, you get it all at the Great Birmingham 10K. A little bit of music. Flashes of some of the great sporting venues we have here in Birmingham. Clearly, we couldn't drift closer to the M6, Dave Moorcroft, and get a super shot of Villa Park. But that's all right. These, these things happen. But you see there, Viola man, Alistair Rutherford. He's, I laugh because he said, I nearly lost my hat. He nearly, he nearly lost part of his instrument. <laughs> it's quite comfortable at that pace, but not necessarily dressed like that. But these are, you know, these are athletes finishing and, you know, for all of them, you can see high, high fives. Hopefully have met before, but certainly they're very intimate now. But it is great. And, and you know, people begin this thinking, I, I could never run a mile, let alone 10 kilometers. And so many of these people have taken on a personal challenge, both to get fit, to run, to keep healthy, and to raise mo char money for charities that are really close to their heart. And it's just wonderful, different shapes, sizes, so many different stories. And for some of these people, they'll be thinking, I wonder if I could do a half marathon, or me maybe even the Birmingham International Marathon in October. And it's brilliant as a runner who's ran all my life to see so many people of so many different ages, shapes, and sizes running and enjoying it every part of society, maybe a bit of cricket to, to enjoy uh, later in the day or in the next few months. But for, the, for today, the attention is on running and runners who have taken over Birmingham for great, great reasons. Well, indeed, and we've been blessed by dry weather as well. It makes a huge difference, not just to the runners, of course, but to those spectating as well. It just keeps getting bigger and better. Every great run in the Great Run series comes thick and fast throughout the calendar year. And I'm sure, as you say, Dave, many of these runners here look absolutely shattered and exhausted, but such a feeling of achievement as well. 38.90, Dickie there, look, looking at his watch. He could do it again, he was as fresh as a daisy. Great achievement and lots of fatigue, but so many smiles as well. And, you know, hopefully these people will watch these pictures later today and, and recognise themselves. Running around Cannon Hill Park now, some walking, many running, loving it. Super. So many great stories out there today in Birmingham. Writing is sort of like my form of prayer in a way, because um, it's my, it's really kind of like my life. Um, running is another kind of meditation and a way of getting into that very kind of, I would call it a kind of sacred space as well. 
Hi, my name is Thomas Glade, and I'm a professor of literature, Caribbean literature, at the State University of New York at Binghamton in the U.S. But I live in Birmingham most of the year, and I am also a writer. I really like the city of Birmingham. It's always been very welcoming to me. You know, honestly, I don't know what happened, but from the moment that I set foot out of New Street Station when I first came here, I loved the place, right? Really and truly. I wanted to do as many runs in Birmingham as, as I could, you know? And I've done this 10K before, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And some of the route is the same as the Birmingham Marathon, you know? So, so it's a way to get familiar with the path and meet people who are going to be doing it and so on. When I run by myself, I can kind of cease to exist. I don't really exist anymore. I just hear my feet, you know, boom, 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 like that. And I feel my sweat and my body, etc. But when you're running with other people, it's like being in a herd of horses and you feel the boom, boom everywhere, you know. And that's also kind of lovely because you can focus on people and, and think, okay, I'm going to stay behind this woman, I'm going to stay behind that person in the pink, and you know, so on. And you also inspire each other when people are flagging, which happens you know, a lot. Well, it's kind of intimidating, actually, to be representing Jamaica, given the fact that um, <clears throat> Bolt comes from Jamaica. And all I'm going to say about that is people have been teasing me about it and saying, Usain Bolt, etc. But um, I can say that Usain is from the north of Jamaica. I'm from central Jamaica. Different parishes, different styles, right? Wonderful to see one of our Commonwealth-themed runners there. Now, um, after the break, we'll be joined by our marathon man, Steve. So we'll see you after the other side. See you soon. Welcome back to the great Birmingham 10K. And I'm joined by the one and only marathon man, Steve. How was that for you, mate? I really enjoyed that today. Um, as I say, it's not often I get the chance to run a 10K race. I'm running marathons most weekends. So to be part of this today in Birmingham is just fantastic. 7,000 runners running a 10K. It's just inspirational, really was. I mean, you, you say you're not used to running this kind of distance, but what would this run have meant to you? Why would you have done this? To be honest, it was, I just treated it like a training run. Um, I ran a bit quicker than I really wanted to. Um, I'm actually running a marathon tomorrow in Milton Keynes and uh, pacing three and a half hour group. So um, yeah, I didn't want to take too much out of myself today, but the weather's beautiful and you just can't help but be carried along. So, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely wonderful. You know, I, I was talking to you earlier and about this thing called the People's Marathon, which was held in Birmingham in the 80s, actually one of the very first mass participation runs to happen. And you took part in it. Yeah, um, I can't believe how long ago that was, uh, 1989. No, and, mate, um, way yeah. early for me, I was probably yeah. about four of that age. <laughs> yeah, and I look back at that time and I just think, and that was my 50th marathon that mm. day, and you know, I would have never envisaged that I would go on to run this many marathons in my lifetime. But you are so. now also going to be doing the, the Birmingham Marathon later on in the year. What number marathon would that be? Well, all being well, um, I need another 22 marathons, but hopefully it'll be number 800 and, and hopefully at the same time establish a new record for running them in the fastest average finish time. Yeah, amazing, amazing, so. mate. Congratulations and thank you very much for running with us. Thank you very much. All I really right, enjoyed let's, it. Let's hear thank more you. from Christian. Vanessa, two 10Ks in two days. How did I feel? Absolutely amazing. And today I got a new PB. I smashed it. A new PB? Yes. After running one 10K yesterday? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, it's been amazing. Really good race. Love the course. Love the atmosphere. The crowd's amazing. Sunshine, what can I ask for? So are we doing another one tomorrow? No, I'll take a rest tomorrow. I've got a relay on Wednesday. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I loved it. Um, can I give a big shout out to Newcastle front runners? Otherwise, they won't let me back in the club. <laughs> You've done your shout there. Listen, go and recover and all the best for the week. Thank you. Take care. Bye. So, the sun's come out, how was that? Oh, it was brilliant. It warmed us. It was lovely. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, it was nice to see it. Especially with the wind, you know? And, and what was your time, do you know? I think it was 101. I think it was 101, yeah. I think so. So it's an improvement, actually. I'm trying to have that. 
John Hafter. I'm trying to. I'm working very, very hard. It'll take a few years, but I'm going to do it. I have an athletic background anyway, so I'm going to try to get much, much faster. I'm swimming and training for the marathon, as you know. So, yeah, I have to do honor by Jamaica. <laughs> the likes of you. <laughs> I'm a true sprinter. You, you would not see me out here running the roads. Trust me. You. I don't blame you. Yeah, it's mad, but it's lovely. And once you finish, you know, I mean, and I was also helping other people, cheering them on, because some people were walking, etc. And I know what that's like. I've done it. <coughs> so this year it was nice to run the entire thing. You know, as much as I, as much as I say I can't do it, I do admire you guys doing that. The, the support that year is absolutely crazy, and I can imagine the atmosphere must have been brilliant. Oh, it's wonderful. Birmingham people, they're so supportive, and that gets you, keeps you going, even when you want to. You know, and they just, come on, Thomas, come on, you know, it's lovely. It makes well, you feel a part of Birmingham. Oh, good. Well, Thomas, don't let me keep you, I'll let you recover. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Well, I can confirm to Thomas and everybody, you've got absolutely no chance of getting Christian Malcolm ever to potentially run a 10K. But we never say never, because I'm sure many of the runners here today said that they'd never run the streets of Birmingham. And they're doing it, and they're completing through the 6K point down Pershaw Road. I can tell you that Kelly Southerton was due to pace out some runners at the one-hour mark, and I've just seen her out the view of my commentary position going through well under the hour mark, so well done to Kelly. And if you've been inspired by today, of course, coming up in October, the 15th of October, the Great Birmingham Run and the Birmingham International Marathon, an international marathon back in Birmingham. Entries are open, 15th of October. Okay, wonderful here. We're joined by uh, Christian Markham and David Moorcroft again. I mean, what, what a wonderful day for running. Christian, you've been out there talking to, to some of these people. Any, any real stories caught your eye? Oh, there's, there's been a few out there. But if, if I say uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Broom, who's actually lost 10 stone in weight. Incredible. You know, he was hoping for sub one hour and actually got 51 minutes today. You know, Vanessa from Grenada has run two 10Ks, one yesterday and one today, and finished with a personal best. So those stories out there are fantastic. There's so many more out there like that as well. I mean, not just not just the stories, the volunteers as well have been unbelievable today. These things can't be done without them, really. They can't. There's 8,000 runners supported by hundreds of volunteers, as volunteers do right across the country at many events. Birmingham University have provided the majority of the marshals today. They've done a fantastic job, students, and also um, provided 400 runners. But the volunteers have been here since the crack of dawn, and they make it all possible for these magnificent athletes to have such a wonderful day. Now, the thing is, Birmingham is also graced the rest of the year with some also some wonderful runs we've got the next year indoor championships also got the uh, big Birmingham marathon I mean some fantastic stuff coming up yeah the world uh, the world indoor championships returned to Birmingham they were last here in 2003 yeah. they're here next year um, but the Birmingham half marathon and the Birmingham international marathon in, in October and many of these runners today will have doubted whether they could ever do 10k at the back of their mind tomorrow and the days after is shall I enter the half marathon or maybe even the marathon because it's a great city of running with a wonderful tradition but but also a great future yeah and, and tickets are on sale for the world indoors so people get out there now uh, uh, Christian what, what I love about these things and you said it in your commentary David is the fact that some people might never even have thought this was possible. And right at the end, you see them, cheeks are puffing, but they're absolutely loving the fact that they finish this race. Oh yeah, definitely. It's about personal achievement. It's about setting your own goals and then going there and trying to achieve them. You start off thinking there's no way I can actually do it. I've always said as a sprinter, there's no way I'd, you know, I'd run a 10K, but you build yourself up to it. And like David said, you know, a lot of guys are on 10K today and they'll be thinking, actually, maybe I can give a go at the half marathon in a few months time. And hopefully they do. I think a lot of guys will get a lot of, a lot of, I guess, fulfilled glory mm -hmm. in what they've done. Mm -hmm. And they'll be excited. And I'm pretty sure you see a lot of guys turning up in a few months time, running that half marathon. One of our great personal challenges is to get Christian Malcolm to do the marathon. I was going to ask <laughs> you, <laughs> drag him out. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's funny, you and Thomas does lo lo yeah, loads yeah. of great distance mm -hmm. running. But, but so many people, you know, Christian, 
when he was an athlete, wouldn't have even thought of 400 meters, let alone yeah, a 10K yeah, or a marathon. Yeah, yeah. But so many of these people, we can't say in, enough, have just embraced running through so many different ways. You know, they might they might run to raise money in a 5K for, for a local charity or cancer research or whatever. And the next thing is they find themselves running in Birmingham with 8,000 other people. It's great. Unbelievable. Like, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And it's been so nice to see everyone out here in their droves. Birmingham's shown up again. Now, Commonwealth Games, fingers crossed for us. It's a good bid, so please, 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 let's hope we get it. Guys, thank you very much for your help, and Catherine as well, thank you very much. And wonderful scenes here in Birmingham. This is a city that loves running. There's a lovely running club here. Look, guys, thanks for joining us, and everyone who's been part of this great Birmingham 10K, thank you very much for putting it on. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Beautiful scenes here in the second city. Kepkoic Kipkarui wins the Great Birmingham 10K. It's a sprint finish. Katani, is he going to get his first victory outside of Kenya? He is indeed. What a finish.